All right, we've been getting uh, vacuum error number nine. Uh, when we've been vacuuming, uh, either in the freezing, we've had it also in the drying process when it's under vacuum. And we're going to do a little test to see what it, the problem is. Uh, we we have the list of uh, things to go through from Harvest Right. And right now I just finished a batch. And I just got to wait for the thing to cool. I'll probably wait about an hour for it to get loose. And then I'll go ahead and open it up pull the trays out because that's part of the process and then we'll clean it all out we'll wash it out with soap we'll just follow the instructions and see what it goes on and see if we can help with that i know when uh, it's freezing there's a nice uh, solid dark ring around here um, about three quarters of an inch thick which is what's supposed to be so it's cr it's pulling the vacuum on here and it, get, it does get down to good vacuum it's just it's a matter of it doesn't hold it for some reason so there could be other problems going on we'll narrow it down and then uh, we'll 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 pull um, a little test here there's a port a usb port on the side we'll put a usb port on here and then when you power on we'll, the, we'll go through the directions on that when we get that point and then i'll download some information we can give that to harvest right so they can help us troubleshoot what's going on but it's been going pretty good so far and it's uh um doing a pretty good job we've put a lot of a lot of freeze drying through it so we'll just go from there so this is what we're going to work on uh, next is uh, figuring out why we're getting that vacuum air all right ready to go through do some analysis to see why we're getting the vacuum air number nine and i've got a i don't know if you can see it too well here but uh, um, i have a, a vacuum test here that we're going to go through Versus as unplug and remove the shelves from the food tray from the chamber. So what we're going to do is we open this up. First thing you need to do is take off this outside seal. And that's one of the things we need to do is make sure it's all nice and clean. And you can see there's a little bit of water in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tray out. And we'll need to clean it because up underneath there, you can, I don't know how well you can see that there, get it to focus on there. There's a plates that you use in there for the cooling and the heating. And you can see a little bit of food scrap gets on here once in a while when you get them on there. So I'll take that out. Uh, let me pause it and we'll take the tray out and then we'll go the next step. Well, I have the tray out. There's a connector here that you disconnect it. It's nice and long. It's nice and long here so that you can get it outside of there so it's not sitting in there and then the next things on a direction say um, wipe out the interior of the chamber to sure it's clean and free of ice and water and as you can see we have a little bit of water in here and we're going to clean this with a little warm soapy water get it all nice and clean in there and make sure the whole thing is nice and clean so let me get that ready get that clean and then we'll come back when I get that cleaned out all right I do have the power turned off and I did unplug it while we're doing this cleaning. It'd be nice to have it on so I don't have to worry about anything on there. And then I have my, my rag here. I'm going to start cleaning this out, wiping it all down, making sure, you know, I can feel a little bit of uh, stuff that is falling down in the bottom in there. And, you know, it'll happen as you're going through doing stuff. Stuff will fall off, uh, especially if you're using a lot of liquids and stuff like that. The drain back here will drain that drain. You got to make sure that's clear. I know it's clear because it's draining out of there. And I have the drain open and then into my little bucket there. So let me go ahead and get this wiped down. I'll clean, do the door as well. Uh, once that gets all wiped down, I'll come back and then uh, I'll, of course, I'll run some clean water through it to make sure it's uh, nice and clean. All right, have it all wiped down so it's all clean and dry. And I know the valve is open because it's been draining. And then now it says, um, make sure the drain hose is sloped down and ensure the water is out. And it is, as you can see, it's sloped down. It's always been sloped down, so I know water doesn't collect in there uh, very much. But there will be a little bit right here, just a little bit in that little ridge. We'll, we'll gather in there um, once in a while. And when it goes to the drying cycle, it does kind of dry it up. And then I leave the door open slightly. You know, it doesn't close completely. Um, I leave it open just a little bit, and it'll sit. It'll sit here, so I can leave it open. It's not in the way or anything, so we don't bump it. And now, um, 
Now it says to remove the vacuum hose and check the O-rings to ensure both ends of the vacuum hose um, is good. Make sure they're not damaged. So now what we're going to do, these vacuum hose connections are just a hand tighten. There's no wrenches for them. In fact, if you put a wrench on it, you're probably going to wreck them. So we can just loosen them up. And now then look inside of here and it looks okay when your finger in there look and it looks like there's nothing wrong with that so I'll put this back on here and then I'll do the same thing on the side of the unit that's going to be a little bit more difficult to get to because it's against the well not against the wall but it's close to the wall and I think trying to hold the camera as well as uh, doing that might oh okay I got it don't really get to see much, but that just hand tight is all it says they need to be. Okay, we'll check this one so we can see down there, see if we can see it. I don't see anything's wrong with it. You know, put my finger in there and feel around, make sure there's no little burrs or anything. So that seems to be okay. So now we'll put this back on and let me go ahead and just pause it while I'm putting this back on. Okay, that end of the hose is back on. So check that. That's not a problem. So let's go back up here and take a look at what's next. Uh, it says, if you're using an oil-based pump, which we are, look at the sight glass on your vacuum and what is the appearance of the oil and how high is it, how how is it filled. Now, it was, it was in the middle. What I had done is I had actually drained it and put it in the filter and that's been several hours ago and this is what it looks like as it's going through the filter and then let's look in inside here let's see if we can pull this cover off and look inside now that's what it looks like now the original oil is completely clear there's no color to it at all so that's something we may have to look at too as well so now then, number eight, if the oil is dirty or cloudy, should be replaced. Make sure to tilt the pump forward, remove all the oil, which I did. Um, get all the oil and water out of the pump. Now, so that we're done with that. Okay, now let's do the next thing. We got to power it back up. So let me go ahead and put the power back here to it. We've got the connector that comes with it that powers the unit. It goes in there. And then the, the electrical for the pump hooks into this other outlet because the, the freeze dryer actually controls that outlet. Now, I'm going to be going through and probably turning on the pump. So right now, there's no oil in the pump. So I'm going to need to add some oil to the pump. So I have a little bit of this one left. So we're going to put that in to start with and see how that fills it up. And we'll want to watch that sight window. Because when I remember when I was doing it before, it don't take long. Once it starts filling, it fills up quick. So let's see if we can get down here a little bit lower. And we've used all the new oil in it. And let's check some other oil. This one here is kind of a bit light. Have another jar of other oil. I've been switching between the two oils because one of them was draining really slow. So let me get this other one here and we'll see how dirty that is. We may have to get us another bottle of this before we can uh, go on. But let's, uh, let me pause that. I'm going to put that in a clear container and see what it looks like. Okay, I put it in a little mason jar. That looks fairly clear compared to what's coming out of this one. That looks to be a little bit darker. So this one hasn't had as many times on it. This one's probably probably just about done. I've probably got 25 or so, or 30, you know, close to 30 batches. And that's all they say it should last anyway. So I'm going to top this off with some of this oil here. So I have good portion of it's real fresh oil and this one here is not quite as fresh but uh 
Um, I'll fill this up because I need to have it up to at least the middle of the sight window. Uh, it can't be below the minimum or above the max. And I noticed the last oil when it was about in the middle and when it was pumping, it was going clear up here in the top. So I'm going to fill it up so it's a little bit, you know, probably right about here. Not quite the halfway point, but a little bit uh, above that. All right, I have oil filled up. This is a little bit clearer than the other one. I'm going to put this back on. Well, I'm going to wipe it down. We've got a little bit of uh, oil on the top of here. Wipe all this down, keep it a little bit from getting so much dirt and stuff on it because that oil will collect a little bit of dirt. Now, I'll put it on real tight. So now, let's go back up here to the front and see what we're going to do here. All right, the next step says power on the freezer, then press the leaf or load consecutive until the freeze dryer is in the dry mode. Vacuum pump will turn on and will pull down to lower the 500 in 500 millitors or whatever you call them in 10 to 15 minutes. And then we're going to keep track of how long it takes to pull it down. And then what is the, the deepest pressure uh, reading after it pulls down? It should pull down to 300 to 100. That is good and see how long it takes to do that. So we're going to keep track of that. So it says to put that. Okay. That mode. We're going to turn on the vacuum. And our vacuum pump should be coming on. Now we're going to want to close the valve here. Our pump is on and running. You can see our oil is in there. Because you run it without oil, that's not going to be a good thing. So that's running. And we have a timer on here, right here, uh, how long it's been running. So we're going to see what this reading goes down to. It should go down to below 500 in 10 to 15 minutes. So we'll look at our little clock here. It is 10 after 2. So we'll look at about 20 after, 25 after 2, and we'll see what it looks like at that point. So we'll see what it pulls down to, and then wait about 30 minutes and see if it does get down below that uh, 500 range, down to the 100 to 300 range. I know in watching this before, it does get down pretty low, so I'll just have to see what's going on with that. Well, let's uh, come back once we get to that point. Well, we're going to check in on here. We have... Right about uh, eight minutes, we're down to 621, and it's dropping pretty good. And as you can see, the, the little dark ring around the seal here, it's sealing up really nice. So that's not a problem. The seal is working good here. So we'll just wait a few more minutes and see what this does. We're right about, oh, uh, well, we got about nine minutes in now, and we're dropping down pretty good. So. We'll let it go. It should drop down with the, within a few more minutes here. I'm thinking it, it won't take much more than 10 minutes to get there the way it's going. So we'll come back uh, once we get uh, 10 minutes in, 15 minutes, and then we'll see what it, the max it pulls down to after about 30 minutes. Well, I was waiting for that to dry. I took the unit here. For the trays and i wiped it all down on the bottom and as well as the top and then cleaned it all out and then took a little small brush and and brushed in here because there was uh, a, a little bit of food scraps in here make sure you get all this this is all nice and clean and then the other thing we'll be doing to we'll move around here the other direction is we had another one where we had to clean those coils off so that's what i'll do before we fire another batch up We'll get in there and get all that cleaned off good. Uh, so we'll be taking the back off and doing that. Um, I already have a video on how to do that. So um, I'll just leave a link for that video in the description. You'll find uh, how to how to clean it. And then um, I, I won't need to show that again. But go look for that video if you need to know how to how to do this. And then we'll we'll go in there. I do have new oil or the newer newest oil in it. 
Uh, the other one's been used quite a few times, so it's it's probably not not very good. So we'll see what it does here. I know one of the problems if your oil is is getting bad that it does have a tendency to lose vacuum because the pump can't hold it for some reason. So I've got that fresher oil in it. Let's look at now. We're at 11 minutes. We're down to 557. So it looks like it's going to be there. What I'll do is I'll let it run and then I'll I'll shut the pump off and then we'll see if it holds that pressure. All right, it's been our 15 minutes and we're down to our 500 and it's still dropping. So I'm going to let it run another uh, probably 15 minutes, about a half hour. See what it gets down to. And then I'll shut the pump off and see if it holds vacuum. Well, just an update on the vacuuming here. Uh, we're at 31 minutes. We're down to 411 and it's still dropping. So I'm going to let it go a little bit longer and see how long it takes to get down to below 300 and see where the minimum is. And then I'll come back and we'll we'll see where that's at, see how long it took down and what the lowest was we got. So we might run a little bit longer on this test. I just want to make sure it's it's down because it should get below 300, uh, the 100 to 300 range, and we're not there yet. So I'll see how long it takes to get there. Well, just an update on on the vacuum test. We can see we're right about an hour and 10 minutes, uh, and I don't know what this is doing but this looks like this started over but we're down to 334 so we're not quite down where it should be i'm thinking it needs to be a little bit lower uh but that we'll have to check and see what's going on with that so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and shut off the vacuum and i'm going to leave the door closed and see what it does the vacuum does See, and, and right away it's starting to increase. So I'm thinking there's probably a leak someplace. Not sure where, but it shouldn't be, be doing that, I wouldn't think. So it may go up a little bit and stop. So I'll just let it sit for here a little bit and see what it does. But I have a feeling it's it looks like it's rising pretty quick. So there's a leak someplace. 